She started off her journey as a ballerina here in San Francisco, and now she's headed to one of the top ballet schools in the world. Joining us uh, today, talking about her journey, is Yuki Koch. Yuki, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Tell, about, tell us about how it all got started from here in San Francisco all the way to Moscow. Well, I was studying ballet here for around seven years at City Ballet School, and my teacher was Galina Alexandrovna. Um, and she studied at Bolshoi Ballet Academy, so she helped me set up an audition there. So I flew in, and I danced in front of the director, Marina Konstantinovna Leonova, mm. and she accepted me into her class. Which what was, was that like, that audition? It was very stressful because I was dancing in a class, a Russian class, a group of girls that had been dancing together for a long time already. And so all eyes were on me, basically, yeah. <laughs> which was really scary. I mean, obviously, it's such a competitive world out there in, in the ballet world. Mm -hmm. What's your day-to-day -day, uh, regimen like? Uh, well, we have classes from 9 till 6.20, including both Russian subject high school classes as well as dancing classes. Mm -hmm. And then we have rehearsals afterwards for our performances. So pretty much all day? All day. All day. And then how do you fit in all your studies? Because you're also trying to get your uh, GED diploma while you're in Russia, yeah. but getting your GED here as well. Yeah, so I'm able to balance school because I attend iCademy Virtual School, which allows me to create my own schedule, basically. Um, and I only have to take a certain number of subjects just so that I can get my diploma. Mm -hmm. How competitive is it when you're at the Academy? You're competing with all these other ballerinas who want to become professionals? It is competitive, I guess I, you could say that, but everyone is really supportive of each other. Especially when we have performances, everyone's always congratulating each other. Good luck, like you can do it. It's a really great environment. So after you graduate, you have about a year and a half left at the academy mm -hmm. in Russia. What, what's after that? After that, you apply for companies all around the world depending on what kind of repertoire you want, mm -hmm. and just see what happens after that. What made you get into ballet when you, were, when you were a child growing up here in San Francisco? Well, my mother was a dancer, so she decided to put me in a little kiddie ballet class, and I ended up enjoying it, so I decided to get into more serious classes. Mm -hmm. after. And then from that point on to here, it just nonstop ballet. Yeah. Uh, how do your feet feel <laughs> at the end of the day? Well, I don't feel them, uh -huh. but they, yeah, they're kind of gross at this point. <laughs> but it's, you have to deal with that. It's yeah. one of the big things with ballet. So from here in San Francisco to, to Russia, to get to that point, not many Americans actually go to the Bolshoi Academy, mm -hmm. a very small percentage. Yeah. You're, you're one of the lucky few. Yeah, I was really, really lucky, especially to be placed into a Russian class because most international students are placed into the, into the international class. Mm -hmm. So it was a great experience for me to kind of talk to Russian students who have, been, have grown up in Russia doing ballet. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're representing the Bay Area really well in, terms, in, in the ballerina world. <laughs> Uh, talk about the history of ballet here in San Francisco. Were there, are, have there been a lot of ballerinas who have gone on to that, that level? Well, of course, yeah, there's hundreds of dancers here. Um, a lot go to Europe, I, and there's none that have from San Francisco, I believe, that have gone to Bolshoi, although I do know two girls who are from San Francisco mm -hmm. attending the Bolshoi right, right now. Right. But other than that, I haven't heard of anything. Does it get lonely there? I mean, you're the, you're, you don't come back to the Bay Area very often no. while you're at this academy. I only come back twice a year. So yeah, I, I get homesick pretty often, but I found a family there, I mm -hmm. would say. And Yuki, tell me a little bit about the, the a ballerina's life. I mean, obviously from now until you get to that professional uh, uh, group uh, that tours the world. Mm -hmm. What comes after that? What's the lifespan of a ballerina? Um, well, a dancer usually their career lasts until they're around 35 if they're lucky if they have no injuries mm -hmm. But after that a lot of them get into teaching 
Some go back to school to get a diploma so that they can apply for other jobs. Mm -hmm. So really it's, you can do whatever you want after. Well, it sounds like it's been an incredible journey so far. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for stopping by and talking to us. Appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me.